I, uh, I spent more time evaluating and considering the nomination of Judge Kavanaugh than I have with any of the previous nominations to the United States Supreme Court that I've been privileged to, to review. I've had the opportunity to vote on five justices prior to this. And uh, I took my time. I was deliberate. I was thoughtful. Some accused me of being too deliberate, too thoughtful, taking too much time. But this is important to me. It should be important to all of us. And I know that it is important to all of us. And so I studied the record. I sat with Judge Kavanaugh for a lengthy period of time, about an hour and a half, and asked the questions that I had, and then did more due diligence, reviewed the cases. And uh, did my homework, listened to the concerns that were raised by many in my state on issues that were all over the board, whether it was a woman's right to choose, whether it was the Affordable Care Act, whether it was executive authority, uh, deference to the uh, agencies, uh, native issues. I, I took, took considerable time. And when the hearings came, not being on the Judiciary Committee, I paid attention. I followed the testimony of the judge, the very critical questioning from many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. Um, and then when at the end of the process, or so seemingly what we believed to be the end of the process. There were more questions. I went back to Judge Kavanaugh, had a good conversation with him. Um, and then the allegations that we have been discussing and, and trying to understand more about uh, came forward. And we all moved from focusing on the issues uh, to truly a, a discussion that none of us ever thought that we would be having when it came to confirmation process for someone to the highest court in the land. And so there was more work to be done. I was one who uh, wanted to make sure that there was a, a process going forward. And when there were more questions that were raised after, after uh, the initial process, uh, was one who joined in asking that the FBI uh, step in and, and do further review. So I have been engaged in, in this lengthy and deliberative process for, for months now. And I, I, was, I was truly leaning towards supporting Judge Kavanaugh in his nomination as I looked to that record. But we know that in our role of advice and consent, it is not just, it is not just the, the record itself. There is more that is attached to it. It is, when, it is why, when in the state of Alaska, a, a nomination for a judge goes forward, you rate them not only on, on their, uh, their professional uh, competence, what they have demonstrated through their record, but also matters of temperament, and, and just demeanor, which are very, very important. So we, we moved, we shifted that conversation from so many of the issues that I had been focused on 
to, to, to other areas that are also important in evaluating a nominee for the courts. The reason I could not support Judge Kavanaugh in this cloture motion this afternoon is that in my, my role, my responsibility as one senator on this floor, I, I take this obligation that we have in the role of advice and consent as seriously as anything that I am obligated or, or privileged to be able to vote on. And so I have a very high standard. I have a very high bar for any nominee to the Supreme Court of the United States. The Code of Judicial Conduct Rule 1.2, this is, this is one that um, many, many people in this body know. But it states that, quote, a judge act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence in the independence, integrity, and impartiality of the judiciary and shall avoid impropriety and the appearance of impropriety. And I, I, I go back and I, I, I look to that. It is pretty high, it is really high that a judge shall act at all times, not just sometimes when you're wearing your robe, but a judge should act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence. Public confidence. Where's the public confidence? So it is high. And even, even in the face of the worst thing that could happen, a sexual assault allegation, even in the face of an overly and overtly, overtly political process, a politicized process, and even when one side of this chamber is absolutely dead set on defeating his nomination from the very get-go, before he was even named, even, even in these situations, the standard is that a judge must act at all times in a manner that promotes public confidence in the independence, integrity, and partiality of the judiciary and shall avoid impropriety and the appearance of impropriety. And after, after the, the, the hearing that we all watched last week, last Thursday, it, it became clear to me or was becoming clearer that that appearance of, of impropriety has become unavoidable. And I've been deliberating, agonizing about what is fair. Is this too unfair a burden to, to place on somebody that is dealing with the worst the most horrific allegations that go to your integrity, that go to everything that you are. And I think we all struggle with how we would respond. But I am reminded there are only, there are only nine seats on the bench of the highest court in the land. And these seats are occupied by these men and women for their lifetime. And so those who seek one of these seats must meet 
the highest standard in all respects at all times, and that is hard. Mr. President, we are at a time when many in this country have, have lost faith in the executive branch. And it's not, it's not just with this administration. We saw, we saw much of that in the last as well. And, and here in Congress, many around the country have just given up on us. They've completely said we've had enough. But I maintain that the public still views, I still view, that there is some small shred of, of hope that remains with our judiciary. This, this judiciary that must be perceived as independent, as nonpartisan, as, as fair and balanced in order for our form of government to function. And it's, it's that hope, it's that hope that I, I seek to maintain. And I think that's why I, I have demanded such a, a high standard to, to maintain or regain that public confidence because it is so critical that we have that public confidence in at least one of our three branches of government.